gears are used in a transmission to make something spin faster or slower at the output than at the input, or to increase your torque at the cost of decreasing your speed. So, in a gear train, each gear that's touching is going to rotate in the opposite direction as the one before it. Because at this point where the teeth touch, then the velocity is shared. So if this is gear one, gear two, gear three, then at this touching point, V12 is the same. And then also at this touching point, V23 is the same. And because it's on two, it also happens to be the same as V12. Now, each of these gears is going to have a radius, so R1, R2, R3, and then the input, say, is omega 1, then these other gears are going to have angular speeds of omega 2 and omega 3. Now, a lot of times, if you're given a velocity at the input, you need to calculate velocity at the output. Or if you know what speed you want the output to be, um, say you have a motor that's driving a wheel. So if this is the motor, this is the wheel, uh, but you want the motor and the wheel to go in the same direction, so you have to put this other gear in between them. Then if you know how fast you want the wheel to turn, you can back calculate speed of the motor. Or if you know how fast the motor is turning, you can end up figuring out what is the wheel speed. Now, because we know that these velocities are matching, then we can say V12 equals R1 omega 1 equals R2 omega 2. And then also equals R3 omega 3. So if we want to find output over input, then we know omega 3 is going to equal R1 omega 1 over R3. So the other way we can get to it, if we wanted to go each gear at a time, let's say because we also need to know like whatever speed the middle gear is spinning. We could say V12 equals R1 omega 1 equals R2 omega 2. R1 over R2 omega 1 equals omega 2. And we know V23 equals R2 omega 2 equals R3 omega 3. So we know that omega 3 equals R2 over R3 omega 2, which if we put in what we got for omega 2 over here, we have R2 over R3 times R1 over R2 omega 1, and then these R2s cancel. We just get R1 over R3 omega 1. So this is a simple gear train when the gears only touch at the edges. Um, but sometimes you will have the gears overlapping or you will have two gears mounted on one shaft and it becomes a complex gear train and then there's not a shortcut for that. So this, this is a shortcut method. So you can use the shortcut method for that. So then the long method for all gear trains. Okay, so let's say we have gear here and it's connected to a big gear. 
And then in the center of the big gear is another little gear. And that little gear is connected to another big gear. So it's kind of a horrible looking circle, but anyway, assume it's a circle. And then here, omega-1 is going that way, then we know omega-2 is going that way. And so if this is 1, say the big one is 2 and the little one is 3, and then this is 4. We know that omega-2 and omega-3 are the same because they're both connected. And then omega-4 is going in the opposite direction. So for this, we know V12 is that way. And then here, V23 is going up. But V12 and V23 are not the same anymore because they're not both touching the same gear. So in this kind of situation, if you want to get omega-4, then you have to multiply by those other ratios. So omega-4 is going to equal R1 over R2 times R3 over R4 times omega-1. So the ratios um, aren't going to, nothing's going to cancel. Um, and we can get this from knowing V12 equals R1 omega-1 equals R2 omega-2. So R1 over R2 omega-1 equals omega-2. And then for V, I guess this is really V34, V34 equals R3 omega-3 equals R4 omega-4, but omega-2 and omega-3 are the same because they're both connected on the same shaft. So then R3 over R4 times omega-2, which is R1 over R2, times omega-1 equals omega-4. So that's how we got this, this formula right here. In this problem, we have a simple gear train, and we're given size of each gear and the angular velocity of the input gear. We need to figure out the magnitude and direction of the output. Well, looking at this, so we know if omega-1 is going clockwise, then omega-2 is counterclockwise, omega-3 is clockwise, omega-4 is counterclockwise. So the direction here is counterclockwise. And then for the speeds, since this is a simple gear train, then we can do the shortcut. And we know that omega-4 equals R1 over R4 omega 1, which equals 2 over 3 times 10, which equals 6.67 radians per second. That is counterclockwise equals omega 4. Now, if we want to do the long method, as we would have to do if this was a complex gear train, then we just do the ratio of the driven gears, um, sorry, ratio of the driver gears over the driven gears. So we know omega-4 is going to equal driver over driven, so R1 over R2, and then next set is R2 over R3, next set is R3 over R4. So then these end up canceling. That equals R1 over R4 
times omega one equals 6.67.